The road leading out of eastern Ukraine is long and often cratered by shells. This is the highway over which hundreds of thousands of people fled west, away from the advancing Russians. Going from a life of this to this. A life in exile in Dnipro, hundreds of kilometers away from home in the Donbass region, but still within Ukraine. Tanya had an ordinary life working for the local water commission in Sivatov, Luhansk. I came here on the 29th of August. We lived in another shelter, but it was cold and my boy got sick. Here it is warm and dry. My husband is with us now. As the war approaches its first anniversary, she wonders when or if they'll go home. She hasn't spoken to her parents, who remained trapped in the region for five months. We are exhausted. My son asks why did the Russians invade. What do I need to tell him? I don't know why Russians did such terrible things to us. This former municipal administrator from Luhansk says this shelter, one of dozens sprinkled across Dnipro, has helped more than 5,000 internally displaced. He says people stay here for several weeks while looking for work and their own apartments in the city. Ukraine's government is trying to address the economic fallout with several programs, but there's a hard reality. People's lives are in limbo. Maybe it's the problem that these people are not looking for the job now because they're thinking of coming back in like one month or two. So for them, it's hard to find some short-term occupation. As the war enters its second year, there are voices in the international community that say, in addition to shipping weapons, the West should encourage a strategy to include the displaced in reconstruction so that these people and this country don't fall further into poverty. Marie Brewster, CBC News, Dnipro, Ukraine.